All right, let's take a closer look now at the escalating tensions in the Middle East. Khalid El Gindi, senior, senior fellow, Middle East Institute, and uh, the author of Blind Spot America and the Palestinians from Balfour to Trump, joins us live now from Arlington, uh, Virginia. Khalid, thank you so much um, for being with us. Just in terms of the Israeli strategy here, we just got word that Israel had also killed uh, Mohammed al Jabari, the man in charge of weapons in, uh, production for the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. On top of that, you've got uh, the killing of the uh, sort of high profile military commander of Hezbollah and two major Hamas leaders in such a short space of time, um, meaning that Israel is essentially provoking uh, Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah all at once. Just explain to us the strategy and, and why now? Yeah, I mean, I think those are those are really important questions. I, I think in terms of the, the first question of what, you know, why these targets, um, I think it's clear that Israel is trying to send a message to all three um, and perhaps uh, others in the region, but to Iran, certainly, and, and Hamas, as well as Hezbollah, uh, that um, Israel can reach their targets, uh, that can target them in any time or any place, regardless of who it is. I think this is what Israel considers uh, a deterrent, uh, that if, uh, if their enemies understand that they could be hit at any level, in any way, with uh, with really no restrictions, as we see in Gaza, there are no restrictions uh, at all as far as the the scale of uh, death and destruction. Um, and so, I think that's the message um, that is intended uh, to send. I think, that as far as the timing, um, I I think it's hard to ignore the fact that uh, there are uh, were ongoing ceasefire talks. I think um, I think it's very it's clear to me at least that. The uh, assassination of Hania was very much directed at the ceasefire talks themselves, um, because if Hamas were to continue uh, the ceasefire negotiations as though nothing had happened, it would be perceived, I think, uh, by Palestinians and others as a as a surrender to continue under those conditions. Uh, and so what Israel is is doing is sort of forcing Palestinians, either you come back to the table on my terms and essentially surrender, or uh, you cancel uh, the entire negotiations and we continue the war, which, as we know, seems to be uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's preference, that he would like this war to continue and, and expand for him in order to stay in power. I mean, a lot of people have voiced that same concern, this idea that it is much more politically expedient for Benjamin Netanyahu to have the war just go on. Um, in terms of just is going back to Israel's strategy, was this much more about the immediate gratification of retaliation? Or do you think the sort of long term ramifications of these high profile assassinations had the long term ramifications and consequences been thoroughly thought through? I don't think they have. I mean, I think there is, I think it's very much about immediate gratification, first and foremost, for the person of Benjamin Netanyahu in order, as we said, to, for him to be able to stay in power. But also since, you know, here we are 10 months into a horrific war um, that has destabilized the region and destroyed almost all of Gaza, in addition to killing almost 40,000 people. And yet Israel has nothing that it could point to as a clear sign of victory. It doesn't have, it has not decapitated Hamas, it has not destroyed the movement, it hasn't even thoroughly destroyed its military capabilities. And so I think there's a, a sense that, um, you know, in some ways Hania was a was an easy target. Uh, he was not in hiding. Um, he was, in fact, uh, one of the main negotiators uh, working on the ceasefire deal uh, with Israel, and he was uh, known for his pragmatism. So I think I think it's a, in some ways, it's a, a, a way to show the Israeli public, look, we are doing something, we're big, we're, we're, we're winning. Um, but the long-term ramifications, I think, are, are, uh, have not been well thought through. Um, as I mentioned, Hania was a relative moderate within the movement of Hamas. Um, and of course, this is not going to destroy Hamas as a, as a political or even as a military force. Um, but it could radicalize them. And I think it definitely emboldens hardliners like Yahya Sinwar, 
uh, the leader of, of Hamas uh, in Gaza, uh, to become much more hardline. So the short-term ramifications are it will make a ceasefire in, uh, much more difficult, if not impossible. And the long-term consequences is you are just adding, uh, we're fueling the conflict uh, that has that is already, I think, destabilized the region, but will continue to be a source of turmoil uh, for for many many years to come. If you just look at the the scale of destruction in Gaza, it's we're talking about generational trauma mm -hmm. um, that is likely to add many decades uh, to an already um, long-standing conflict. Because at the end of the day, you know, you assassinate um, these individuals, and they end up being replaced. I mean, that is the reality on right. the ground. Um, and, you know, we're two months away from the one year anniversary of October 7th. And as you point out, Israel it really is no closer to its stated goal of completely eliminated, eliminating Hamas and, and maybe even further away from it, depending on the consequences of these high profile assassinations. Halid El-Gindi, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much.